Uh, hey, hey, Coach Dan. Happy Thanksgiving, guys. Happy Thanksgiving, you too. So, um, yeah, Coach was just uh, uh, trying to see where you all are at. Uh, I'm trying to get the offense back on track. Um, when it looked at the 26 possessions, sure. uh, but couldn't come up with a theme that kept uh, – it looks like a whole bunch of different things there. Yeah, I mean – Obviously, if you go back the last two games, it's not where you want to be offensively. Uh, it's our job to score points. It's our job to stay on the field. Uh, third down conversions obviously are an issue um, mm -hmm. that we need to get better at. Um, that starts with execution from from the coaching all the way down, making sure that we're putting the guys in the right position, uh, making sure we're giving them the right looks uh, in practice so they can go out and execute. There's always going to be unscouted looks, so hopefully guys – uh, you, you've taught them the rules, and they rely back on the uh, on the fundamentals of the play. Um, again, it takes everybody to to play well on offense, uh, from the coaches all the way down to the players, um, to how we think about you know where we want to be offensively. Uh, we've had good stretches of offense uh, this season where we've maintained drives, scored points in critical situations, stayed on the field. Uh, we need to get back to that. And again, I think it's it's all about going back to the fundamentals uh, of each position. Uh, stressing to the guys how important in critical situations to go back and rely on that. Um, and also, it's not to press. I think when you all of a sudden try to make a play uh, that's not there and you put yourself out of position, you know, it affects the whole the whole offense. And we just got to make sure uh, from coaching all the way down to playing that we understand that we stay within ourselves and, and not press in those situations. And uh, short yardage, uh, Coach kept talking about package plays where – uh, I guess the quarterback's got a package and he can call different stuff. Um, uh, do y'all have to look at that package to to make sure you, you know, try to convert some of them third sure. and ones, fourth and ones? Yeah, sure. I think everything, obviously, you're under the evaluation. We had a short week uh, last week. It gave us, obviously, time as an offensive staff to go through things that uh, we need to improve on. And, again, you evaluate everything. Um, so the look that you got defensively to what – inevitably stop the play uh, to make sure that we put our guys in the best position. And, and then we go out with a great mindset in practice this week, which uh, again, I thought yesterday guys approached the practice in a Wednesday practice with a great mindset, great attitude. Coaches had great energy. Uh, so again, I'm looking forward for some of that th more this week. Thanks. Thanks, Dylan. Michael. Happy, happy Thanksgiving. Dave. Happy would, Thanksgiving you ever, would you ever say if, a, if you had bad practice, uh, I think, again, I think you go to each practice. There's some days, I will say this about practice. There's sometimes you come off the practice field and you're like, man, that was really good. And you put the film on and it really wasn't as good as you thought. Some days you come off the practice field and you're like, man, that wasn't very good. You put the practice film on and you're like, man, that was better than I thought. Uh, again, I judge it more by the, the energy, the enthusiasm, the execution of the actual uh, assignments of the players. And, and you felt good about where you're at. So... Why do you feel like the explosive runs haven't been there for this offense this year? Where, where's been the missing part of that? I'm sure you've heard this. I'm not the first to tell you this, and I probably won't be the last. But, you know, in the run game, just like in the past game, but especially in the run game, it takes all 11 of the guys. So there's certain times where there's been a cavity. Um, and for whatever reason, you know, there's been a situation where that hasn't turned into an explosive. Again, I go back to the fact of you just don't want guys to press or just look for it. You know, you got you want guys to have great feel, but rely on what they see and trust what they see. The minute you start acting outside of the actual framework and trying to do something too much or you're trying to do something extra, I think typically that that ends up hurting you. Uh, again, we're going to go back to the fact of relying on the fundamentals. Uh, trust what you see. Trust your eyes, especially at this level. It happens fast. Trust what you see and execute the play to what you're asked to do. And it's the same thing for coaches, making sure we put them in the best position. Could there be something to when maybe so those holes have been there and those options have been there that it gets in guys' heads that you guys haven't really been that productive there and it could give them that half second of concern or, or whatever? Is that is that a possibility where that could be why it just hasn't matched up where you could get one? Yeah. Again, I think that's it's a good question. I think that would be, you know, suited for to ask individual guys. For me, from the offensive perspective, you know, again, we just go back to from a coaching perspective, 
do we give the players a chance to be successful? If yes, what led to a good play or not a good play? If we did not give them a chance to be successful, what did the defense do schematically uh, for us not to be successful? And then we evaluate ourselves. This is what's great about pro sports, in my opinion. It's self-evaluation constantly. Uh, you go into it, even when stuff you know happens well, it doesn't mean it's always because of great execution. Sometimes a guy just makes a play. I used to say this all the time when I coached a quarterback. If the quarterback spins out of three missed tackles and throws off his back foot, 45-yard touchdown pass, I never drilled that. Like, that's not coaching. That That's just God-given ability, mom, dad, and God. You know, if the quarterback drives back and he three hitches and he should throw the ball off one hitch and the ball in the first and the progression is wide open, yeah, let's let's talk about that with the coaching. And sometimes it just happens throughout the plays like that. And you go back and you always evaluate why or why not. Um, and a great, I think it's it's great self-awareness for, for all of us. Um, it's a humbling sport. I was taught this a long time ago when I entered this league as a player. You're either humble or you're about to be humbled. Um, and again, this is what's great about the NFL and each Sunday is a new narrative and a, and a new game. Did Dave or Goen ever uh, have one of the spinning plays that threw for 45-yard touchdowns or was, or was that the yeah. anti-Dave or Goen play? Yeah, that was uh, in my, when I was doing the clipboard. I drew it on the clipboard exactly how I would do it as a backup quarterback. Look, I'm in no illusion that I had this pro career that people are jealous of. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I, I always find it interesting. At the end of the day, sometimes a guy makes an unbelievable play like the guy made the play, you know, you can drill all you want. Sometimes a guy just makes an unbelievable play. Good and bad, by the way. Appreciate it. Thanks, Dave. Happy, happy Thanksgiving, man. Hope you get some time with them. Josh. First of all, forgive my ignorance on this subject. When you talk about play, are you just talking about two? It's an either or. We just send you to the line of scrimmage with one A or B. I, you broke up a little bit, Josh. So I couldn't hear the whole question. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Can you hear me? I got you now. Yep. Sorry. When you're talking about packaged plays, is that just you send you send Matt to the line of scrimmage with A or B? Is it just two options? Sometimes. You know, other times there could be a, another essential prong to the play in which he has an adjustment depending upon coverage. But, again, we our goal is obviously always – Right. As you sit here and you game plan all week is they put the guys in the best position. And sometimes, you know, given that ability to to get out of a certain play because of a certain look to give you an advantage. Sure, we're going to do that. And sometimes you walk up, you know what you want to run. You, you know the defense and it's a call and a run. It's a bread and butter play. So there's different variances of how you go about those certain situations. On a different subject, when Arthur talks about talks a lot about physicality, how do you affect that? Wednesday through Saturday in an environment where you only have so many contact practices. Yeah. What things do you do, markers do you look for to say this is a physical team and this is how we're going to help maintain that or increase that? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, the way the rules are set up in the NFL in terms of the actual padded practices that you can have. Um, again, I, I think sometimes with the physicality, I'm speaking offensively, it goes back to maintaining great leverage having great energy off the ball, regardless of position. You know, I think most people talk about the O-line or when the running back has the ball, you know, the old adage in football, low man wins. So it, you don't necessarily have to have the pads on to see the explosion off the ball or great pad level. I think those equate to physicality. I mean, a lot of the guys in this league are strong, right? Physically strong, weight room strong. At the end of the day, though, it's all about the position you put yourself in when you're either a delivering the blow or potentially accepting one. Uh, so in my mind, when you watch that in the non padded practices, right, you're seeing the position in which guys put themselves in. If they're in great position, more than likely, right, strong enough guy, he's going to probably bring some physicality. If he's out of position, I don't care how strong you are or how tough you are. You're probably going to lose that battle in the National Football League. So it's a great litmus test to see how guys display physicality when there's no pads on. How does a core I asked Matt this question yesterday, but how does a quarterback set a tone of physicality from that position? How did you try to do it when you were playing? <laughs> Matt and I are completely different. I was 252 pounds, but I threw an incompletion. I tried to run you over the next play. It wasn't very smart. Right. Like Matt operates at a much higher level in terms of the execution of throwing for how many yards he has. Uh, again, I do think though, you know, from a position of quarterback in terms of physicality, it, it equates to me in toughness in the pocket. Again, everybody thinks they can go back there. 
you watch it on TV, you have no idea when you're a stationary target sometimes and a guy comes off the edge and you and he you get hit right in the back of the head or the back and you got to get up from it. And I think what goes sometimes, I don't say mischaracterized, but the toughness in the pocket sometimes is not the sack you just took, but the hit you just took. You got you get back up, you go back in the huddle and you call the play as if nothing just happened. And you take the next play in a pass situation as if you just did not get hit the last play. So you see a lot of guys at times, right? They get up and for whatever reason, the next rep, they maybe aren't as sturdy in the pocket as they should be. Well, it's probably the, the rep or rep before that that they took a hit in the pocket. Again, Matt over his career, and there's been a number of quarterbacks. Matt over his career, though, gets back up, calls playing the huddle, and takes a new play as a new play uh, and displays physicality and toughness that way, um, how he is and how he operates in the pocket, regardless of just what, of what just happened to him. Again, I've always admired about him, and there's another other quarterbacks that have done the same thing that you admire in terms of physicality and toughness. Thanks, Dave. Scott. Thanks, Josh. Hey, Coach, um, I, I was curious, is, is there any difference in uh, Matt's leadership style after a win versus after a loss? Are there any changes that you notice? It's a good question. You know, just obviously being with him here for my first season, what I do appreciate about Matt is he's the same guy every day and he's consistent. I think when you're at this level, uh, players or coaches, you're looking for consistency. Um, and regardless of the outcome before or after, uh, Matt approaches each play as a new play. He approaches his teammates the exact same way. Uh, he knows when to to speak up. He knows when not to. He knows the tone in which he needs to talk to the coaches and players with. Um, obviously, it goes with a lot of years in this league. But the one thing I can tell you is Matt is a example of consistency as a human being, as a person. Um, and I do I do admire and appreciate that about him. We've seen some examples of him being pretty fiery um, and then other times where, 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 where he kind of exudes calm. Do, like, do you have to know when to raise your voice so it, it doesn't become one note? And like, how does he handle those those types of things? Yeah, sure. I mean, again, you know, he would be better to tell you than I would just observing uh, what I think he does a great job of. Um, he understands the moment. Again, I think his his game winning drives of how many he's had in his career kind of exude the fact that he understands of how to operate in, in highly critical and stressful situations. Uh, but again, he's not, when I say he's consistent, it also means like he knows, he knows when to be how he needs to be in order for him and his teammates to be successful. Um, and again, seeing it day in, day out, it's one thing for someone to tell you that it's another thing to see it in action. And Matt's been about the action with that, which has been great to see. Thank you. Thank mm -hmm. you. Yes. Um, what have you seen from the running back room? Well, actually, let me ask this first. Allison had a great game um, last game as far as running the football. What have you seen from Allison that um, helped him have a great game and just in practices? Yeah. Great question, Anthony. I think what you see is, what I've said before in this league, guys sometimes just need opportunity. And what he's done is been a consistent model of how he practices on the scout team. So, again, when you're in the NFL and you're not the starter or you're not maybe the backup and you're trying to work your way up, uh, the reality is you get your work on running the other team's plays. And there's a lot to be told from that, how you approach that, the seriousness in which you do it, um, how you go about your business. And he's been great. And so when you see that and you see how he's done that, uh, I think you ask anybody on the staff, uh, we have complete and total confidence. If, if he were to get carries in the game, uh, that he, he would do his job. Uh, that's all we ask these guys to do. And, and again, you saw on the field on Thursday, and I think he did what he was asked to do, nothing more. Um, again, it's all about guys getting opportunities in this league. There's a lot of really good players, sometimes good players, unfortunately, throughout the history of the NFL, don't get to see the time that maybe – um, other guys get, but doesn't mean they're not good players. They just haven't been afforded the opportunity at times. And my last question is, of course, within the running back room, I kind of talked with Mike Davis about yesterday about um, just running. He said sometimes he's second guesses because sometimes you may be getting a little bit of yardage here and there. My question is more so what do you just tell your running backs to stay focused so that when they – so that they can break a big run or get that big chunk of run. Yeah, sure. I think, you know, obviously it goes back to what I said earlier. 
this game will never be anything more than about the fundamentals. Uh, when you start to, it's all positions. It's not just one certain position. The minute you start to do something outside of what you're trained to do over the last OTAs training camp and into the season, and you rely on something that's not your base or your foundation, um, I think all positions will have issues. The minute you trust your eyes and you trust your fundamentals and what you've been trained to do, it doesn't matter what the situation is. You rely back on what you're trained to do uh, and what you put yourself through. And again, that's been the the stress point. Um, that's what we tell the players. That have, that message has not changed just because of the last two games offensively. That's been a consistent theme uh, ever since we arrived here. So again, we continue to message that. Uh, guys understand it. And, and Again, if you believe in what you're preaching, I think you don't waver from it. And we've seen guys come out this week and show that. Got time for one more, D-Led. D-Led, no Thanksgiving dinner questions, dessert questions. Come on, D. You're muted, D-Led. Might have been one there. Still muted. No, no, we good. Uh, no, um, no, no Thanksgiving questions there. Uh, oh, sure. You we'll following the playoffs? Throw one on the back end. Huh. All right. How about saying that in the playoffs there? Yeah, yeah, that, yeah. Um, yeah, let uh, I've been uh, been watching the Cleveland playoffs. I've been lobbying to get you on the top 100 list. I found out that uh, there's another quarterback from Ignatius, Scott Murtaugh, is ahead of you. Unbelievable. I mean, I thought you had pulled, D-Led. Come on. Yeah, my, yeah, my boy Branson's going to uh, – I'm lobbying Branson to redo the list. Thank you. Yeah, I, I know, I know I'm on like the top 1,000 list, not the uh, can't You're crack. You're probably still ahead of me though, d -Line. Come on. <laughs> yeah. But uh, hey, just the importance of depth from your position. You know, you've been with teams that made it to the playoffs. I mean, this team is, you know, trying to get there. Uh, the importance of depth and, and then uh, if, is, if Drew, is Drew Dahlman ready if needed? Depth, if Drew, Drew Dahlman's ready if needed and where you at on mac and yeah. cheese? For my one last question. All right. I love it. That's a three prong. There's no chance I remember all that. So the first part, right about depth. Yeah, yeah. Here's how I feel, right? I've been preaching it since, you know, I've had a great opportunity to talk to you guys each week. It is competition breeds that. So mm -hmm. as we talk about it, right, guys, and I think Ollie's, a, you know, Allison's a great example. Continue to go out there and compete each day. You never know when your opportunity is going to arise. You never know when it's going to be your chance. And this league, when you get an opportunity, regardless of how much or how little the opportunity is, take advantage of it. And again, that goes to the same thing with depth. That builds your depth when there's great competition. When guys know there's a chance for them to compete, and when they have an opportunity, they'll get a chance to play. Um, so that's that part of it. In terms of Drew, I think it goes, like I just said, to everybody. That That's not just a Drew question about is he ready. It's we, we expect everybody who gets a helmet on game day to be ready to play. And if you don't get a helmet on game day, we expect you to come out and compete during the week in case or whatever is an emergency where you have to get brought up uh, to be ready to play. And that's just not the physical part. We, we expect you to understand the game plan, go out and be a professional. Um, so that's all positions. The mac and cheese, look, D-Lad, I grew up in an Italian home with Italian immigrant parents. I didn't have mac and cheese for Thanksgiving. Now we have lasagna, D-Lad. So that's the Italian mac and cheese, essentially, all right, from that standpoint. So that's where I'm going with that. All right. That's awesome. Thanks, Steve. I appreciate it, man. Thanks, right. guys. Happy Thanksgiving, guys. Happy Thanksgiving.